Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Merry Christmas to you. Um, we have, uh, I kind of have a little tradition that, um, that uh, I'd like to kind of write a poem um, for each Christmas day, and uh, looking back over time, some of them are kind of cheesy and silly, and, and some of them are, are, uh, are okay. And, uh, and so just a, a reminder of some of the things that have happened over the last year, and, and also a reminder of, well, the Word of God. And, and today it's kind of interesting because our reading points towards this weird title, this unusual kind of fact about Jesus, and that he was described as the Word made flesh. And so we often don't talk about that at Christmas time. It's interesting that this reading comes up, that, that we often look to Christ as the child, the, the Messiah, the Savior. All those titles are perfect and wonderful. But his title today is a reminder that he is the Word, and that God spoke the world into creation, and Jesus was there, present at the very beginning. That God used words and spoke, and people were created. The world, the universe was created, and Jesus was there. The Word made flesh at the very beginning. The Word made flesh born at Christmas. And the Word made flesh, even coming to us through his words even today. What a great reminder for us today. And so it seems fitting to use words to describe the word made flesh. So, um, so here I go. Sit back and, and listen, if you would. Uh, today I wanted to share a few words about words, both spoken and read. Words can be gentle. Words can be very harsh. They can be both written or said. So many forms that words can take. They can be whispered or shouted in song. They can be tiny, short, simple, or complex, difficult, and long. Within the church, we talk a lot about words. It is studied and repeated. It is memorized, talked about, never ignored or deleted. But certainly words are interesting and a little odd. We cannot compare our own words to the very word of God. Our words can have power, might even change a heart. But God's word is creative. They brought the world to a start. So we have to be careful and understand what is written or spoken. God's word are powerful and perfect, and ours can be broken. I know it's Christmas, and we'd like our words to be about hope and joy. We'd like to think that our words would be words of thanks for gifts or the toy. Even more, we would like our words to focus on the child born in a manger, so humble and mild. But we should probably confess that even today our words are not always right. They've caused division, jealousy, broken hearts, maybe even a fight. So today I invite you that the best thing we can do is to begin by seeing God's word in a way that is fresh and new. It's not just a book that brings some sort of luck like the foot of a rabbit. It's a way to speak, that he speaks to his disciples. We should make it a daily habit. It's not just for reading or hearing on one certain day. It becomes a daily joy to hear what God has to say. And by his word, he changes us and makes us to grow. He reassures us of the cross so that his grace we would know. But sadly enough, his word commonly sits on a shelf. Too busy, we say, as we decorate, wrap, or look for the elf. But it's not just Christmas that we find our time of great need. It's common for us to be too busy to open his word and read. But in our reading today, we find truth about his word. So don't get distracted. This needs to be heard. We have heard before that his word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Today we heard that his word made flesh, and he's talking about our Lord. This is mysterious, and it might even sound a little strange. How can his word also have flesh? Was it some kind of change? Yet it speaks to the fact that Jesus is, was, and always will be. It reminds us that in the flesh, one day we will see. He was there in the beginning at the very start as God created the very first human heart. It says that the word gave life to everything that was made, that Jesus Christ was there when the foundation was laid. What a beautiful truth we find this to be. May it fill us with praise as we join and see. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity we say, creator, redeemer, sanctifier, that we will never turn away. This is our reading for today. We should open our eyes. The world we see, this is such a surprise. That God does not just stand back from the world that he made, but he would take on flesh and in a manger be laid. We celebrate this truth during the Christmas season. Never forget that he entered the world for one specific reason. His word speaks to the reason, to save his people from their sin. 
to give eternal life and a new life today to begin. The gift is yours. By grace you are saved. By the Spirit you repent of the sins that you once craved. The word is still working. There's so much more to be done. God's will is that we would all turn to his son. So now we hear it. The word continues to go out, even spoken with our lips in a whisper or a shout. So we cannot neglect to cling to his word. It should be read and studied and spoken and heard. Otherwise, we really wouldn't know what to do as we live as disciples that are daily being made new. There's an old hymn that describes how this will go. The lyrics of thy strong word tells us how his word will flow. It says, give us lips to sing thy glory, tongues thy mercy to proclaim, throats that shout the hope that fills us, mouths to speak thy holy name. So we pray that his word would be spoken and shared. It is through this gospel that all would be spared. And yet also the word is present as we meet, joined in the water and to the sacrament that we eat. Yet in these walls, he does not remain only here. He goes out into the world despite our struggle or fear. So the word will not just be spoken, but his word will live through our lives, our homes, the time that we give. Let me share just a few of the ways this is done. Just a few of examples of the word, Jesus Christ, his son. There's a ministry to children that is celebrated by all of us. You can't really miss it. Just look in the parking lot and check out the bus. Ongoing relationships with children and a meal of some sort, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, is present and food for it. Other children in need cannot be ignored or neglected. It's part of our ongoing prayers as we have daily reflected. So several families are deep in the process of adopting a child, rescuing children from people and places dangerous and wild. And these children will join this family on our way to heaven. The word made flesh, Jesus Christ, present in Haiti, China, and even Plevin. We also have children in need right here in our city. Some choose to ignore them, and some give them their pity. But around here, they're loved, joined to a family to share. The word made flesh, Jesus Christ, present to care. We also see teens and young adults and the young and the old, a diverse group of disciples speaking so bold. Those that would study the word in classes like the search, people willing to be and to make disciples within this church. As we consider the future that God has in store, as we meet new people and God adds more, we cannot forget those that have served and have given and were willing to share, those that have provided an example of how a disciple will love and care. In the lives of those dear to us, both living and passed on to glory, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, present here to tell his story. I'm not being proud or arrogant as I speak. I'm just giving examples or a very brief peek of the power of the word who not only came to heal the sinner, the blind, and the lame, but also his ability to equip, unite, and deploy a diverse group of family, of believers all filled with his joy. We praise God that he called us to be a part of this place, different ages, backgrounds, color, or race, all united by the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, who continues giving through his strange people as they're loving, learning, and living. Now, I could conclude my message, it'd be a good time to bring this close to my Christmas rhyme, but I have a couple more closing thoughts to share, to simply remind you of Jesus' love and care. You needed a Savior, and Jesus died for your sin. He gives you a new life, and today you begin. The Word made flesh is present in his book. Open it, study it, and take a good look. Let's do this together in this coming year. Our new life as disciples, he will make it clear. We celebrate Christmas today and we gather and sing, but look to tomorrow and the new growth that he will bring. So in the days to come, we will see his unstoppable, that's what we say, loving, learning, and living in you yesterday, yesterday tomorrow, and even today. Amen.